you guys are clear, we need to go get body work. If you guys are clear, body work. Reset fuel. Reset fuel. Nope. I think we're gonna go right away because everybody's sort of sleeping behind us. Alright. You okay with that? Roger. Let's go ahead and start it up. Obviously, you know, there are a lot of competitors in our class, the GT Daytona class of the Tudor Championship. More competitors in our class than any of the other classes that are out there. So strategy becomes a big piece of it. Okay guys, thanks for getting us here. Good race, nice stop. See you guys on the podium. Roger. It's very analogous to a chess game. You know, you have to see what your competitors are doing. You have to see what your car can do to their cars. There's a uh, driver strategy. There's actually sort of basically two races in one. You know, we have an AM driver and then we have a pro driver. Green, 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 green. Can't pass two We always start with looking at how long the race is and how long minimum driving time is. Uh, so you know uh, how much time every driver has to be in the car. And then we look at how long a stint will be. Then we go from there. Then we have to see uh, what happens, how long the track is, how much fuel we use and stuff like that. Okay, lap is a 28.4, you're 28.2, Bill Sweetler is behind you doing a 28.255, Nelson Ganache at a 28.554, car off, it's clear. We have a minimum drive time for the AMs that we have to acquire, so that we need to make sure that we can make our fuel load to what the drive time is, and if we can't, then that means that we have to do more fuel stops. So there's where, you know, the, the fun begins in the strategy. So if we come in now, it's going to go green when we're on pit road. It's not going to be like a regular yellow. Let's not worry about what's on the track. we got to figure out what we're going to do here. See, they called pits are open here, and then they went green here on the last one. Then we are going to... Leave you out. Leave you out. Cup. Slow down a little bit. Slow down a little bit. Slow down a little bit. Fuel tires are in the cage. Slow, slow, slow. Slow, slow, slow. slow. Good strategy at the time, and then uh, we brought in Jerome for his final pit stop really early, hoping to get a yellow, and uh, it never quite came out, but uh, the, the strategy did end up paying off, and Jerome drove an incredible race. I want you to pit this lap, pit this four tires and fuel, four tires and fuel. Bumpy, bumpy. Well, the biggest strategy thing would be we have an hour of fuel left, it's an hour, and it's getting close to that last fuel stop. If there's a yellow with an hour 20 to go, you have to decide whether you want to come in and risk there being another yellow, or pit under green and risk being at the back of the line. So that's one of the things that you have to kind of roll the dice and see what's going on. Usually you'll see the engineers take a look up and down pit lane and see if they see the lollipop guy for the other teams get the lollipop ready. If they see him get the lollipop ready or get the fueler starts to get his hose up off the wall, then you know that your, your opposition's gonna be coming in also. in by, uh, I think we beat the Porsche by maybe one lap. I think they came in uh, about four minutes after we did. And, uh, you know, so it paid off at the end. It was definitely a gamble. Uh, there was a chance we weren't going to be able to make it on fuel. But, uh, you know, I felt like it was the right call to make. Uh, if, if we had gotten a yellow in the next five to ten minutes, then we would have ended up in, in an extremely good position, maybe even first place. We were a little concerned that we may have to have Jerome save fuel in the end because we did uh, stop a little early uh, and uh, we decided to uh, throw caution to the wind and uh, risk it and uh, we timed it just right. 